Coach Mike Dawkins from World Cast Anglers here with your Jacksonville weekend fly fishing forecast for the weekend of August 14th and 15th. It's hard to believe that we're almost halfway through August. I know, it's crazy. We're going to start to see summer loosen its grip on us. And we're going to start to see fall start to start creeping its way into our weather patterns, into our fishing, into our hatches, and some things along those lines. Looking forward here into the next two and a half weeks. A lot of our creeks and tributaries, like Moose Creek behind me, were pretty low in sort of rough shape, you know, going into the end of July. But all that rain that we had at the end of July and all of that rain that we had last week has really done a doozy for our small creeks and tribs. As you can see, Moose Creek's got a bunch of water in it. It's cold, it's clean, it's great trout habitat. It'd be a perfect option if you're looking for some DIY walk wade fishing to go check out some different places, Grovant. Hoback, Moose Creek, Palisades uh, Reservoir Tributaries, Buffalo Fork, Pacific Creek, Grays. Those are all prime time right now, um, you know, with especially the rain and the increased inflow that we've been having. The big news that we've got this coming week is we've got the Fly Fishing Film Tour coming to the Spud on September 16th. We've got tickets in the Fly Shop. You can get tickets online through our website. It's going to be a big old party like we normally throw at the Center for the Arts, but we're doing it this time in the fall, and we're doing it outside. Uh, so the Spud Drive-In, September 16th, Fly Fishing Film Tour. Tickets are 25 bucks at the World Cast Angler Fly Shop. Stop in, grab one before it sells out, because you know it sells out every year. Saturday and Sunday, it looks like it's traditional summer weather, the typical weather that we've been having, hot and dry, 89 and 55 on Saturday. 87 and 56 there on Sunday. Our 10 day forecast though, it's looking really good for a cool down. Mid 70s during the week, mid 40s there at nighttime. So we're gonna start to see some of our water temperatures cool a little bit as well, which is something that we definitely need. Palisades Reservoir, 38% of capacity. We're losing about one percentage point a day. Jackson Lake, 48% of capacity. As I said, we're starting to see a little bit cooler nights and cooler days. We've seen water temperatures drop on the Snake. We've seen water temperatures drop uh, up there on the Henry's Fork north of here. And I think echoing Rob Van Kirk, the senior scientist from the Henry's Fork Foundation, he thinks that the warmest water temps, we've gotten over that hump, but we're not out of the clear yet. The South Fork of the Snake, 13,500 CFS being discharged from Palisades Dam, 14,300 CFS there on the lower river. There's still a lot of water in the South Fork of the Snake, and the fishing is still really darn good. We're seeing mutant stones, especially in the canyon and some of the lower sections. That's a dawn patrol program. You want to be out there at first light. You want to be done fishing around noon. And you know those Placinia stoneflies, some of them have those short wing cases where it's you want to move your flies and you want to move them around twitching, jerking, sliding them, however you want to call it, a lot of those stoneflies jitter on the water surface. So it can be a really fun, really exciting time. It's like streamer fishing with a big drop is what we've got going on now in the South Fork. But like I said, it's over around lunchtime. The rest of the day, be looking for PMDs, some leftover caddis in your terrestrials, hoppers, beetles, ants, dry dropper fishing, nymphing in the afternoons has been really good as well. Snake, 4,030 CFS being discharged from Jackson Lake Dam, 5,420 CFS there on the lower river going into Palisades Reservoir before the salt and the grays. This was the first drop that we saw coming out of Jackson Lake Dam from the summer flows. It dropped 500 CFS yesterday, 500 CFS today. So we're looking at a 1,000 CFS draw down, which is really good for the snake. I would forecast the snake to really kick into high summer fishing gear now that we've got some of those lower flows. Dry dropper fishing with Chernobyl bugs, you know, water walkers, Schroeder's parachute hoppers, any of that kind of stuff paired with your favorite dropper would probably be very productive. I would expect the small dry fly fishing, tractors, terrestrials, PMDs, caddis, things along those lines to get really good as well now that those flows have subsided. Clarity is much better than it was last week and the week before that. It seems like things are figuring themselves out on the Hoback and some of those other areas where we had 
that deluge and portion of rain increase inflow in some of those areas and we saw uh, turbidity and clarity. Turbidity increase, clarity decrease, and water flow increase as well, but things have definitely stabilized. The Henry's Fork, 749 CFS being discharged from the box, 1,280 CFS there on the lower river. The Henry's Fork, we saw some dips and some dives and discharges from Island Park Reservoir. That's due to irrigation demand and withdrawal uh, through delivery canals and uh, consumptive agricultural water use, but it seems like it has tapered out there around 749 CFS. The box is still fishing really good with dry droppers, with golden stone, with hoppers, big parachutes, things like that, paired with a, a heavy tungsten jig style dropper is definitely something um, to take a look at. Now that there's a little bit less water in the box, you may not want to concentrate so much on the banks. I'd start looking to some of those inside seams, those slots, buckets, things along those lines. The ranch has been really good lately now, especially since we've got some of that water dropping out of there. Leftover PMD spinners early in the morning, late in the evenings, cinnamon ants, hoppers, terrestrials, things along those lines. It's a good time to be on the ranch right now if you like head hunting and single dry fly fishing to a single rising fish, which how can you not? The lower river has been fishing okay. You know, we had a really good reprieve with the rain and the cloud cover in the cooler days where the lower fish river was fishing really good. I would, I would suspect things will slow down with this heat that we're having these next couple weeks. But next week when we get those days in the mid 70s and those nights in the mid 40s, hopper fishing and terrestrial fishing down there on that lower river can be really good. Watch your water temps as we've been preaching. Get those fish back in the water. Use stout, strong leaders and tip it. You know, don't put any undue stress on those fish any more than they have to. It's still definitely an early morning program as well. The Teton in the Valley, 208 CFS uh, up by Driggs, 623 CFS down there in the lower river. Similarly to the Henry Sport, we saw some really good fishing on the Teton when we had that cool down and that rain. We saw uh, water levels that I reported last week that were around 299, 300 CFS. So I think what we're seeing is we're seeing that water that we received from the precipitation drop out and we're back now to like baseline summer flows uh, here for the next couple weeks until we get some more precipitation or we have consumptive water users start to turn off their water uh, from cutting their alfalfa hay, barley, etc. Teton, similarly, I would say it's still an early morning program. Get your work be on early, get your work done early. PMDs, caddis, terrestrials, hoppers, beetles, ants, dry dropper fishing, small streamers can be really effective on the Teton up here. We haven't really been sending many people into the canyon or the lower river due to water levels and warm water temps. So that may change, like I was saying in this 10-day forecast, when we see a cool down coming down the pipe. Yellowstone National Park, it's still on Hudal closures, no fishing on rivers and streams past 2 p.m. I would expect Soda Butte Creek, Pebble Creek, Slough Creek, that northeast corner of the park to continue to fish well with PMDs, caddis, and terrestrials. I would expect some of the lakes to still be fishing well with terrestrials, calabatus, things along those lines. They don't close at 2 p.m., so if you're looking to check out maybe like a Lewis Lake, a West Thumb, um, some other things like that, those can be really fun this time of year. And to be honest, there's usually no one out there so you can have the place to yourselves. Black Creek over there in the National uh, Elk Refuge, it's on Hudal, suggested Hudal closures to stop fishing at 2 p.m. We've had some really good reports from there. Traffic is starting to trickle out to so the novelty of opening days wearing off, and this is a good time to be out there as people start to lose their interest in Black Creek after getting their butt kicked for the past couple of weeks. This is when I like to really get after it over there with hoppers, beetles, ants, a crane fly here and there, your PMDs, rusty spinners, you know, any of that kind of stuff, calabatus spinners even, as well can be really productive. Long leaders, light tippets, low profile, head hunting style, you know, similar to the ranch, be ready to be, have your butt act absolutely kicked or to have one of the most rewarding drive fly fishing experiences 
um, of your summer is definitely an opportunity there on Black Creek. Once again, we got the Fly Fishing Film Tour, the Spud Drive In and Driggs, September 16th. Tickets at World Cast Anglers, 25 bucks. You can get them online as well. And there will be a link uh, in this fishing report for those as well. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you have a safe weekend and a great weekend out there on the water. Stop in the shop, say hey, we're still on summer hours, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day of the week. We're here for you guys. Thanks for tuning in and have a great weekend.